having discussed the first three questions for the 2022 past paper questions, we're going to now move on to questions four through to six. All right, so question four, it says state two factors that contribute to food spoilage and contamination. And our answer here would be two factors that contribute to food spoilage would include poor storage and moisture or temperature. Other factors that could contribute to food spoilage could be action of enzymes and unhygienic surroundings or conditions. Moving on to 4B, it says name two methods of food preservation. And then the second part of that question says for each method of preservation named above, state one example of a food that can be preserved using this method. Alright, so the method of preservation that I would have selected here would have been freezing, which is a cold type of a preservation. And I also have dehydrating, which is a form of removal of moisture. Now, in terms of the examples for freezing, I would have listed um, green beans here, but you can also freeze other vegetables such as carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, fruits can also be frozen as well. Meats can also be frozen. In terms of dehydrating, now I would have selected fruits here and as an example, I would have listed pineapples. Remember, other food items can also be dehydrated. For example, when grapes are dehydrated, they become raisins. You can also dehydrate other fruits such as papaya. You can dehydrate milk to get powdered milk. So there are lots of options. All right, question 4C. It says you are preparing a boiled cereal and toasted bread for breakfast. Explain one chemical change that is expected to take place when heat is applied to each of the breakfast items. So I've prepared the responses in table form. In the first column, we have the chemical change for the boiled cereal. Now let's just say for example purpose that the cereal in question here is oats. So think about what would happen when you're preparing a nice delicious pot of oats porridge. Now it says here that cereals contain starch and as such when it is added to water and is heated, the starch granules, they start to swell. This chemical reaction is referred to as gelatinization. And one thing to note also, as the cereal continues to swell, once it is in the heated liquid, it will start to thicken. So think about when you're making the porridge, as I said before, you'll notice that these changes do occur. All right, the second breakfast item is toasted bread. Now again, use real life examples when you're thinking of creating your responses. Now when you're toasting a piece of bread, what do you notice or what do you realize will happen to the bread once it is toasted? Naturally, the color will change and the texture will change. Now this occurs because of a chemical reaction that is called dextrinization. So like I said before, put everything into context, you'll notice that when you are toasting bread in real life, the color of the bread will change, so it will become darker in color. The aroma is different, the flavor is different, and the texture of the bread is different. And this is because what will happen is that during dextrinization, the starch is then broken down or turned into dextrin, and that's what causes all of these changes to occur. Moving on to 4C. So the question says, while preparing the breakfast, you are baking a cake. On removing the cake from the oven, you notice that the cake is flat. Explain two ways in which you could have prevented this from happening. Now the first one, you want to ensure that the oven is preheated before placing the cake in the oven. And you do this because the cake would have a um, leavening agent inside, whether it be baking powder or baking soda. And as such, it would require a good amount of heat in the beginning stages for optimal rise. Since it was not preheated, it would have resulted in a heavy or dense and sometimes undercooked or flat cake. So you'll notice that when you are using recipes, they will state or mention that you should ensure that you preheat the oven before you place the item inside. This is one of the reasons. 
In addition to that, if the cake batter was undermixed, it could result in the cake being flat as enough gluten was not developed to give the cake structure. For this reason, the batter should be thoroughly mixed. And then thirdly, if the oven door was opened too frequently, it could cause the cake to become flat. This is because a change in oven temperature will cause the cake to fall. So this is why in many instances when you are having practicals, your teacher may encourage you not to open the oven door too frequently, even if you are too excited because a change in the temperature can result in your cake being flat and you won't be too happy about that. Moving on to question 5, it says list three important principles that should be considered when using small kitchen equipment. So the first one we have here is to unplug equipment when they are not in use. Number two, ensure to read through the manual before operating equipment. And number three, use oven mittens and pot holders with adequate padding when handling hot dishes. Question 5b lists three principles which should be followed to conserve fuel, time, or energy in the kitchen. So the first one we have here is to use high quality cookware. For example, you have some materials that heat up quickly and thus the cooking time would be reduced. For number two, Use a pressure cooker where possible. Again, this will cut down on time used for preparation of food items. Number three, keep pots and pans covered while cooking to prevent heat from escaping. And then number four, you can try cutting cooking time early. For example, you could turn the oven or the stove off a few minutes early and the heat will be retained by the appliance or the cooking vessel and the food will continue to cook even though the flame is turned off. The next question says that you are to choose one small electrical device used in the kitchen and explain the role of any five special features of this small electrical device. Now I will have selected the microwave oven. So the first feature is that it has electronic commands and for the function it says that it has electronic controls, um, numbers and commands are printed clearly and the keys are pressed to start cooking. The second feature is that it has a temperature probe and what this does is it keeps track of internal temperature of foods and it either turns the oven off or it switches to a lower temperature when preset temperature is reached. The third feature is automatic defrosting and this can adequately thaw or defrost food and turn food occasionally. Next feature is the turntable and this improves heat distribution and then finally there is a moisture sensor and what this does is it tracks the moisture level in the food as the food releases steam. Alright and now we're at question number six. So this one gave us three terms to define. So we have bulk shopping, consumer and credit. Now bulk shopping it refers to purchasing large quantities of a particular product at one time. A consumer refers to a person who purchases goods and services for their own personal use and credit means to obtain goods and services before payment based on the trust that payment will be made in the future. Alright, so this next question is asking us to list three rights or responsibilities of the consumer. So you have the option here of listing just the rights of the consumer or just the responsibilities or you can give a mixture of both. So as it relates to the rights of the consumer, now the consumer has the right to seek redress, they have the right to be heard, they have the right to a safe environment, they have the right to choose, and they have the right to consumer education. As it relates to responsibilities, I would have listed two here. So it's their responsibility to be critically aware, meaning that it is their right to be alert and question the use, the care, and the price and the quality of the goods. They have a responsibility to protect themselves. So it means therefore that they should be able to take all the necessary steps to protect themselves, basically, yes. 
6C. It says explain three ways in which exposure to external cuisine negatively impacts the habits, behaviors, or attitudes of Caribbean people. So the first one is that we will, and I say we, <laughs> we will become less appreciative of our own country's cuisine. Now, oftentimes we get so caught up in the taste and the appearance and just the excitement of trying something new that we tend to neglect our own culture, our own food. So this would be one of the negative impacts. Number two, it says, well, some external cuisines may be interesting and tasty. They may also have a negative effect on health as they may be higher in sodium, fats and sugar. So this one is taking a toll on the health side of things. And then number three, people will tend to gravitate more towards other products being imported into the country. And as such, they will stop purchasing locally grown produce and other foods. 6D. Suggest four reasons why safe kitchen hygiene and safe food handling are important food management practices in the restaurant industry. The first one, kitchen hygiene and safe food handling reduces the risk of foodborne illness. Number two, they are important as they limit food wastage. Number three, they enable the restaurant to maintain a good reputation and then finally number four it reduces the loss of customers and profit to be earned and that concludes the 2022 past paper all the best on your examinations i hope you found this video useful